All right, guys, welcome to the Saturday Nerd Chat, which is actually on a Sunday this week. Uh, <laughs> this is week 15 Christmas special, if you haven't been able to tell already by our uh, amazing attire. <laughs> Check it out, Jacob and Pat. Do you guys want to, what do you guys want to talk about today? All right. I, I guess we could talk about how to get into cyber. We'll leave that up to Jacob and um, we'll get some questions from each other and answer them. So go ahead. Okay, cool. Yeah, so um, there, there's a, I mean, it's a question that comes up a lot, but um, one of the best ways to kind of really start out, like if you don't know anything and you're just trying to get a feel for the different things, uh, really getting involved in like the community, um, you know, reaching out, asking people questions, uh, joining like a Discord, um, like Pat's got a Discord up, uh, Black Hills has one up, or if you have like a local um, ISC squared chapter or like a local hacker space, those are really great ways to reach pros. Uh, here in the Tampa area, we actually started the Undercroft, which is like a local uh, cybersecurity guild where people can come and actually get training that's led by other members. But really it's kind of getting out there. And if you're on a budget, um, a site that I would really recommend, it's called opensecuritytraining.info. And uh, all the training there is completely uh, digital media rights free. Um, it's basically designed for people to teach classes or learn from classes. So it has everything bundled there. Um, they have it separated by different beginner level, intermediate level classes. Ooh, and it what covers was that everything. website again? What was that website? Uh, it's uh, opensecuritytraining.info. Okay, cool. And we can include that in the description below. Yep. Well. Yeah, I'll throw it on. Um, whenever it's uh, posted, but yeah, they have uh, it, under the training section, they have it broken down. They teach like Android forensics, they mm -hmm. teach um, cellular security, some network stuff, uh, all the way down to like secure coding, hacking techniques. And then when you get into more of the advanced classes, that's when you get into kind of like the pen testing, doing root kits, reverse engineering. So that's also something where if you, you know, even if you don't think you know something really well, a lot of times if you just you know, put it out there. It's something that someone else doesn't know. So, you know, really, if you contribute back to the community, that's what kind of helps it grow. And, you know, that way you're not paying like eight grand for a SANS class every, you know, couple of years. Oh, yeah. yeah. And yeah. That, that that cost barrier can be painful trying to get over that. So this is a good way to kind of get a feel for different things, um, you know, try out different things hands on, because that's really the best way to learn is by doing. Mm -hmm. And some of the course material may be outdated. Um, you know, three or four versions behind, but most of it still applies. So, you know, if there's a specific tool in there, the UI might not match the pictures. And when you figure that stuff out, you know, update the courseware, put it back, contribute back, throw it on GitHub, uh, you know, make yourself a, a little project page that you can give back to the community and really contribute. Because a lot of people aren't contributing just because they think, oh, I don't have anything to offer. But really, there's just so much that we need to get out there that every little bit helps. No, totally. And I appreciate the input. And that, that's what I can vouch for this community versus when I started in IT, right? I started in IT with networking, systems admin, and that's the differentiator between the cyber world and like the IT generalist. Mm -hmm. Because I, I always felt like if, if I'm an IT guy, and I was never like this, but I, I've been on teams like, for example, VMware, and I wanted to be a part of uh, a new ESXi deployment. Those guys were always like, Ugh, it's my domain. Never really yeah. sharing. And that, that's a totally different um, field in the cyber. And it's a totally different feeling that I get. Like when I first got into it, yeah, I knew Windows. I knew Active Directory. I knew a DNS. Dude. I knew all these protocols, the o OSI model and TCP stack, and blah, blah, blah. But when I was like, oh, shit, like back then it was Backtrack R3, right? It wasn't mm -hmm. Calilet yet. And then I got into this, I didn't know anything. You know, I would like to say something else, but I, I didn't know anything. Like, yeah. you know, I knew Ubuntu a little bit. I knew how to do if config and LS and, you know, and still till today, I still do VIR, you know, cause I came from the Windows background. So don't feel like, like sending in the Cisco world. I have a few Cisco applications, but I still use the help command. If I'm in Linux, I still use the man command. Like, I'm not no expert at everything. So like when you actually put in the work and like Jacob said, like in this side of the world, um, unlike maybe some of the systems and the network and stuff, you have to be hands-on. You have to understand like what you're really doing before you, you know, like if we're doing hack the box, we're doing try hack me, we're doing 
you know, pen testers, labs, whatever kind of tool you're utilizing out there on the internet, or you just have your own pen test lab with Metasploitable, Metasploitable 2 and 3. I mean, 2 and 3, there's not Metasploitable. Yeah. But, um, and you can create your own lab, and maybe we'll make some videos to create our own labs one day. But um, yeah, so this is awesome. Like, I'm checking this out now, opensecuritytraining.info, and go on yeah. the training tab, and um, like, like uh, Jacob said, and the, you know, there's like other ones. There's there's security uh, securitytube.net. There's some cool mm -hmm. videos out there. Hacking loops, um, and obviously hack the box and try hack me and hack this. I, I'd say like if you're just starting off though, like try hack me is a little easier than hack the box because it kind of gives you step by step. But I think mm -hmm. the big thing is learn the basics first. Um, give yourself time because there is a lot to learn. You're going to make mistakes, and that's a good thing. Um, you'll you'll see different people that are showing flashy tools all the time, and you know I get a question: What's the best tool for this? And, or you know, like what's the best tool for pack analysis or for wireless hacking? And, and the answer is whatever tool gets the job done. Mm -hmm. So like whatever tool you're comfortable with, you know, learn it inside and out. There may be other things like you know, Armag Air Armageddon is a great tool. Yep. Um, I still just use uh, the uh, air cap suite and I do things manually because it's like, hey, I can go lower, I can go slower, I can stay under the radar, I'm not triggering IDS alerts. Mm -hmm. You know, those tools are great, but they're very noisy. And if you don't know what you're doing or how the tool works, it can actually make your job harder. Mm -hmm. So like a lot of those like web app scanners, like, you know, people shit on Burp Suite um, because they say it's easy mode. It's like, no, it's a tool. There's a lot you can do with it. There's a lot of add-ons that add functionality. But if you don't know what you're doing with the tool, then you know, it, it's like, why bother? It's like when you start off guitar, you don't buy a five thousand dollar guitar and start learning to play. You, you buy a little cheap, you know, fifty hundred dollar guitar, learn on that, build up your skill, and then move over to the other tools. And when you understand those foundational things, then you can learn how to really exercise those tools in a new way where it's like, hey. I know that this scanner crawls in a specific way that isn't going to work for this environment. So I can make those adjustments because I actually understand what the tool is doing. So I always, you know, promote that, learn the basics first, really learn this and learn how to hunt. Like, like you said, like you're not going to remember everything, even if you use it every day, the, you know how to look for information, read the manuals, understand how the option flags work. Mm -hmm. Sometimes if you put options in a different sequence, some tools it's okay some tools they'll just crash and you'll think oh this tool isn't working or it's crap and then really it's just a syntax thing where mm. i mean i'm dyslexic i can't spell to save my life so when i do coding <laughs> you <better> believe <laughs> I, I've, I've learned the hard way you know don't assume that it just failed because the tool failed or the connection failed like double check sometimes there'll be a little space or you know white space or like a little tack that got in there or sometimes instead of like a single quote it's actually the tack mark over by the uh, tilde above the tab and you're like crap i have to go through and do a fine replace on all my code now to make it work yeah so you're, you're saying and, and, a, oh sorry go ahead pat no no i was gonna say it happened like i was doing scans like enumeration for users in in a wordpress thing i was doing last week and i, I was forgetting the dash u you know what i mean and, and i was writing this whole thing i'm like you know i'm like why isn't why is this thing not executing why isn't this thing not executing and i'm like i had to go back and you know i missed the dash u but just little things like just like i, I love like uh this is more in the networking world like jeremy char from cb nuggets and, and keith barker and all those guys even they they're ccies and mm -hmm. they use a question mark right and they're expert at the expert level and they're still whatever the case may be you know for an example show ip interface brief and we'll, you know, show running from face space slash pipe include. And then it's like, okay, what do I want to, whatever. You can use a question mark. Don't be scared. Like, yeah. you know, do that. And it's, it's all good. Well, I mean, it takes you a few seconds to actually just look rather than assume something and take down a network. Like, take your time, do it right. There, there's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Jane. What were you saying? Oh, no, I was just saying. So you're saying that it is. It, Best to get into the basics, obviously, right? So you can learn what you're even doing or what the tools are doing before you're actually using them. What are some paths to do that, to start learning the basics? Like, where is a good starting point? Well, yeah, I definitely say like uh, A plus, network plus, like good kind of foundational knowledge uh, for the security side, um, security plus or SSCP, the uh, system certified or uh, system security certified practitioner, which is one of the ISC squared certs. 
Uh, those are good kind of in the trenches working foundational knowledge. And there's a lot there just with those tests. Uh, the advantage with like the SSCP, that, that's the route I went because it knocks a year of the CISSP requirement off. And a lot of times people see, oh, you need five years of experience, but they don't really understand like the domains. Like when I was getting in, yeah, I had a few years working servers and doing, you know, the, that type of stuff. And then my, my boss at the time, my manager, uh, he, he pointed out like, yeah, you've also done, you know, network wiring. You've uh, installed HID card readers, like that's physical security. You've done security camera, closed circuit TV. That's another domain, you know, within physical security. So a lot of this experience can come from many different places and help prepare you for it. And the CISFP, like it's, the, the, you'll always hear people talk about the mile wide inch deep. It's, it's much more of like a managerial type cert rather than like a really technical one. Mm -hmm. But the amount of information it covers is ridiculous and it changes constantly. So that's really where the challenge comes from. It's not that it's like a specifically hard test, it's just the volume of information you have to absorb because you don't know what's gonna be on it. You don't know if it's gonna be like, you know, the networking stuff or uh, uh, security related or cloud security or policy related, yeah. you know, which security Risk. model would work best for this scenario. And those are the, that's where the challenge comes from. A lot of people have trouble absorbing that much information. So, you know, if you're coming out, don't shoot for that right away. Start small, build yourself up. Mm -hmm. hey, right. What do you think about the EJ, what is it, EJPT? I was just about to ask that as well. Yeah, so I took that in June. Um, I got it for myself as a birthday present just to uh, kind of get a feel for it. I think it's a great cert for anyone looking to be uh, in like the um, uh, offensive side, like pen tester or uh, you know security analyst. It, good foundational knowledge. They take you through it. The test is very uh, accommodating for newer people. You get three days, so that you know if your internet connection craps out or you don't have a stable connection, you have three whole days to do the test. They give you 20 questions and all the tools you've been given beforehand. So if you pay attention to the training, do the labs, when you come into the test, you'll be able to answer those questions. And it's a lot more forgiving than their next level one where you have seven days to do the test and then you have to write the report out just like the OSCP. Mm -hmm. yeah. And a lot of people have told me, they're like, yeah, if you can do that, you could go straight from their professional pen testing one, uh, the CPT, and take the OSCP because they have a lot of overlap. It might not be easy to go the other way. I've heard some people that got their OSCP first and then came into the um, uh, eLearn uh, certified pen tester had a little bit more trouble because they have some more pivoting labs um, compared to, well, at least my experience with the OSCP test. We didn't do any type of pivoting like through a firewall or a jump box. Mm -hmm. But on this other test, um, yeah, they, they had that as uh, an, a challenge within the environment I was testing in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and especially now the OSCP changed, I think, February of this year. So if you yeah. prior to that, like I took mine last year in October of 2019. And I heard now, like, there's a lot more active directory mm -hmm. attacks. There's, you know, there's a few more uh, updates. I haven't really looked at the, the syllabus. And um, yeah, and, and I was thinking about, and obviously, if you guys don't know what the EJPT is, it's uh, from eLearn Security, and now eLearn Security is with IME, so the training is no longer, if I'm correct, with eLearn Security. You have to go to IME and yeah. get a security pass. Um, and it's a, it's a certification that might be on my list, and I, I was thinking about doing it. Even though they say it's a junior level cert, mm. um, I just think it's, I want to get the experience from a different vendor's perspective. And that that's more of my my take on it. I don't. I, I'm sure I can pass it, um, but you know, I, I want to do it just for my own sake. I think your challenge is at the level you're at now. You might be overthinking things because that's one of the things I had where I was like, it can't be this easy. Like you know, th there has to be some challenge. I forget that it's like a entry level cert. So I'm like, why am I, you know, overthinking it? And that that's really th those type of fears. That kind of imposter syndrome. That's very common in mm -hmm. the IT security space, you learn a lot, you know a lot, but you feel like, oh, I'm not that great. There's other people out there that are doing it better. There might be, but there's plenty of work to do. There's a lot of challenge out there. Yeah. Don't be afraid to fail. Failure is your best teacher. You're going to learn more from every failure you have than anything else you do. And it's better to fail at home in your lab than at work in production. So like, you know, build it, practice, make your mistakes, learn from it, and then come in and be a rock star on your job. Mm -hmm. No, I, I can agree on that. I, I can definitely agree on that.
because yeah, if you if you try to think, you know, use these tools in production and you screw something up, it's not gonna be a pretty day. It won't be yeah, a pretty day. We call those resume generating events. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. That's so somebody's gonna get fired or yell at real bad. Yeah. So go ahead, James. Things. Uh, I, see, I see James is a LED project. What was that all about? My LED project? Did I have an LED yeah. project? Oh yeah, that was at, that was at work. Yeah. <laughs> that was I'm still cool. an electrician by day, um, hacker boy by night. No, but uh, I was just installing Eight those LEDs. Days. Yeah, we're actually <laughs> work, we're working on a, a a hockey rink, and um, it was like the jersey wall uh, display. And believe it or not, it's actually in some guy's backyard which is insane. <laughs> um, no, but going back to what you're saying, so with some of these entry levels, ways to get in, um, you're talking about like having that mindset of, of trying to help and give back. And I think that's really important because uh, that's the, so one of my friends, he's a CISSP, he's actually a security consultant now. So he's, he's been in the, in the industry for years, right? And he was, has this nephew, he wants to get into IT as well. So, uh, so he suggested like, like he, when he was first starting to get in some of the things that he did, you know, a plus and whatever, but he had him reach out to me to ask me if there's like any new things like nowadays of getting into it, like what are the steps now? Like have things changed? And I think at least for me, one of the most important things was, was just like you guys were saying, if create that Instagram, you know, start making those connections, like make a discord or make a YouTube do anything that you can to start helping to give back and, and make those connections. And just like you were saying like about the, you know, what if the UI changes on that website you're talking about, you know, ask them, let them know so they can change it. When I was taking my A plus, like if I would see that some, something as simple as like a typo, like I would let CompTIA know like, yo, check it out. Like you need to make some changes, right? And just to stay in that mindset of trying to give back and help out the community. That's exactly what has helped me make the connections with these nerd chats that we're having right now, right? And it's like, uh, I think that's the difference today because everything is just connected through social media and that sort of thing. It's, of course, you have to learn the basics. You know, I got my A plus, my network plus, my security plus, and, you know, and of course you have to know like what you're talking about. But I think equally as important, I would say, is to start uh, building those connections and, and finding out what other people are doing. Cause that's really what, what's going to help you. Cause you can take an entire course and learn the same thing that you learned from a few conversations with one of you guys, you know? Yeah. And so that too, like, um, I mean, you can get a knowledge of it, but there's something different with actually doing it like hands-on. And I, I think also like, you know, finding mentors are great or even just, you know, if you, if you see someone in the field, like I've had people reach out to Instagram on or to me on Instagram, they're very surprised. I responded. Like I try to always respond, you know, when, when I'm not swamped with work, you, you know, go out and ask, you go to the conferences, there's a uh, local B sides conferences all over. You can go and meet people and you can have a conversation and see like, Hey, maybe I want to do this. And then I talk to somebody, I realize, Oh, that's not really the career field for me. But while I was at right. this event, I found something that I liked even better because there's a yeah. gentleman who I worked with years ago, wanted to be a pen tester, loved it. Um, he did not enjoy his experience doing it. There are some long hours and depending on where you work, it can be very stressful. And he got into digital forensics through an investigation we we're doing and fell into that. Now he's got a master's. He does digital forensic work for a company called Thorn. Um, which basically specializes in tracking down human trafficking victims and uh, victims of child pornography. So he's working, you know, helping to find these abused people. And he loves what he's doing right now. And he found that completely by accident by just going out and having those conversations. Yeah, and I think totally. that's a great point. But to your point, like, yeah, learning those things, like, you know, you, you have your A plus, you have your M plus. That's different than, you know, don't learn to pass the test, learn to know and take good notes because you're going to forget you need to reference back and to the point of building your brand i think that's a great idea we had a gentleman who uh, works with me at my company and he has a website that's basically just when he got out of college he put all his little projects on there um stuff he was doing with charities which is a great way to get free experience you yeah. can go to a charity i i know some it stuff i want to help you guys and then you use a recommendation you're not going to get paid but you'll get access to stuff you may not get otherwise so he built this whole website up of stuff he was doing for charity, his CTFs he was doing with college, 
And then he attached that to his resume. So when you you know are looking to separate yourself from the crowd, hey, here's an experience that I have documented on a, a page I built basically to promote myself. And that's a good thing because I would get questions like that. And I guess James is an, another person. Like when you don't have the real world experience, but you know you have a lab. So say for example, people say, oh, I don't know if I can get a job because they're asking for three years experience. Experience is experience. If you do it from a, like you said, a charity, a church, uh, uh, what is it, Salvation Army, whatever these- uh, Internship or apprenticeship, yeah. Yeah. Or just setting it up in your house, setting up back, whatever, Active Directory, or, or doing whatever you want to do, having one of these little wireless things, I don't know if you see it, <laughs> this is what I won from Beyond, uh, it's still sitting in the bag, but um, <laughs> and then you can have a little rubbish router somewhere sitting around and you can, you know, hack that, not go through your neighbor stuff, just set up your own little thing, put a web key in, you know, use whatever, like, why? I love Wi-Fi, I don't know, maybe it's stupid easy, you just do it, click it, and- I actually just one. checked so, out Wi-Fi for the first time last weekend, it was pretty cool. Yeah? It, yeah. Yeah, yeah and, 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 you know, like, get real hands-on, so then when you go on that resume, you go on to that interview, you can say, yes, I've done Wi-Fi princess, you know? Maybe you haven't done it with Radius, integrating with Active Directory, like all this craziness, like Aruba or, or whatever kind of APs they're using, but you can say, okay, I understand three-way handshake. I understand how to intercept this traffic. I understand how to do these basic stuff. And they can say, okay, at least he knows what Airmon is. Okay, can you have something that's in, uh, you know, what is promiscuous mode, right? You had to put it in promiscuous mode to allow that traffic to capture. Right, if it's, you know, by default, it's not in promiscuous mode and all these little things. So if you can converse with someone about this after interviewing, maybe you never did it in a real life pen test or real life scenario, but you have this experience at home and just elaborate on that in the okay. interview. You know, I did that way back when, like when I got into the Cisco stuff, I was so balls deep into Microsoft. I was scared of Cisco. I think I've said this on several things because command line always freaked me, freaked me out. You know, and so one day <clears throat> a friend gave me a switch. I didn't know what I was doing. You know, then I <laughs> did, you know, the CCNA, I never did the ICMD one. I never, did, I only did the one exam. Cause I was like, yeah. and then um, I'm like, wow, this is not as hard as I, I thought. And then I would do this. And then I went to the CCMP level and then CCMP security. And then I went up, up the ranks because mm -hmm. I was in, in that realm of technology, right? You ask me now to configure BGP and all this stuff. I won't be hitting that question mark. You know, you get done, <laughs> and I have quite a few Cisco certs. And so, so that's why it, it all boils down to the question mark, understanding the community and understanding you can ask for help. Obviously, I know a lot of people have this fucking, excuse my French, just ego on the yeah. man. And let that ego down a little bit, bro. Like, you, you'll be all right. Yeah. You know what I mean? no some, some of that comes from um, uh, the culture that, like, the job that they work at, where that's how you secure your position. You're the only person that knows that thing. And that we call that tribal knowledge, mm -hmm. where, like, you're, it's not documented. You're the only person that knows that you're the go to guy, but you're also a single point of failure. And if you leave, that knowledge mm -hmm. goes with you. And that mm -hmm. can cause a lot of problems. So uh, we, we try to promote the other side, like, you know, rising tide floats all ships. Get you know, do a lot of cross training. Get that out there. It's better to be that person because there's only two ways to grow yourself. You can build yourself up, or you can tear down others. And exactly. you know, and always, always be the first. And exactly, if you put yourself in the other shoes, say for example, you just got hired for a six figure job, and you know, excuse my friends, Dick Face before you left with his knowledge. Now you're going into something that you don't know. You don't want that. You don't want that happen to you. Oh, that, that, that never happens. You're never up at three in the morning reading white papers on some product you've never seen before. Yeah. That's not a thing. Don't scare them away, Pat. We need more good people. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, man. So I, I've been in, I've been in those shoes, like, you know, like, especially like a smaller companies when you're a one, two man shop and, you know, the higher guy, you know, you have the help desk and your sysadmin and your system engineer that's dealing with, you know, you can have a system engineer that has the IT director role, system admin, network admin, VMware admin, the whole shit bang. And then you have, you know, the monkey that, you know, help this guy that's doing all the grunt work. And, you know, I leave, this guy's not going to know, but if I didn't ever document it, use it something, you know, to collaborate with him okay. with uh, documentation, then you're SOL. And you know, once you leave, especially depending on how you leave, I guess, you get it all boils down to that. You're not answering that phone call to yeah. else. Well, that's funny. Too. 
like I was just thinking, like you talked about Cisco, like, oh, Cisco wasn't that hard when you switched over. And in my mind, I just pictured like these nightmares where I was trying to get USB drivers to work for console cables mm-hmm. so I could get into the actual CLI. Cause yeah, like Windows XP days, like the USB converter of the USB to console cable just sucked and the driver sucked and you had to change the baud rate. Yeah. <laughs> now it's easier, but yes, now it's not uh, cool. yeah. easy. They got the FTD and prolific cables now. Yeah. Yeah. Play. yeah. Back in my day. <laughs> I thought I had one, but I got hardware with the IO port. Yeah, I thought I had one laying around here, but I don't know. I don't know what it is. Yeah. <laughs> I think it hits my backpack. But um yeah. So James, what about you? How's your studying? What have you been doing? What have I been doing? I, I so I'm trying to take the the word busy out of my vocabulary because I read some article about how busy people don't really get shit done. Mm-hmm. So I'm just gonna say that I've been productive. I feel like everything's been all over the place. Um, but what I have been doing to keep me sane is uh with the help of Jacob, we're playing with this little guy right here, and it's uh it's been a plus, dude. I uh it's a ponagachi, right? There it is. Yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah. Dion, Adeline, they've been helping me a little bit too. Uh, same with Shelter. I, uh, I cracked my first uh, hash yesterday and it was exhilarating. So, nice. yeah, it's been cool. Yeah, I've been, wanting to do my, like uh, I've been wanting to do my wireless training as a video. I might have you uh, demo it just to make sure it's not too crazy for like newer people before we put it out there on the YouTubes. I'm with it. We've been waiting on that class actually, Jacob, believe yeah. it or not. Well, it's, we, we had, um, the whole, with the whole COVID, yeah, we've all been pulling double duties, but I'm looking forward to getting back to the office and playing with this little guy, uh, Proxmark three. So this can be used to clone, uh, HID badges. There we go. So you, can, you can clone them to other cards or you can just have it to where it replays. So you can like scan someone's badge and then replay as them to try to get through doors. So is it just like fun. instant replay, no configuration or anything on the fly? It, you, can, you can set it to where it has a button push, um, but yeah, it has a little button on the side that you can program to where you, you push it and it'll have like a little LED for when it read the card successfully and then you push it again to replay. Very and then cool. the other way you can just record a whole bunch of cards and then clone them to physical blanks that it comes with. Um, so it comes with like three or four blanks that you can you know program with whatever card number you, you scanned nice. within you know, the frequency it covers. So I'm looking forward to playing with that. And, uh, doing some uh, internal purple teaming back at the office once we're allowed to go back to the office. <laughs> God, I don't know gonna happen. Happen. Yeah. Everyone's saying, uh, thank God 2020 is over, but here comes 2021. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Any, uh, so James, like, uh, have you been applying for like IT positions or this? Your... No. So oh, I'm, 2020, uh, 2021. Pardon. So I was applying um, and, and my goal actually last year, it's funny, was to be like secure a position in IT by June. Uh, obviously, yeah, <laughs> a lot of stuff has changed since then. But what I was able to do is uh, in around July was start working, uh, doing an internship with BlackBot. And, it, and it's funny because it's exactly what we were talking about is I it was through it was actually through Nikki, you know, through a series of connections that I made on Instagram and uh, like people that I met, I was able to meet a founder. A security company and I started an internship with them and since then I've actually been working with them all my off time so when I get off work I hop on the computer and try to work a lot of it is a uh, more business development stuff it's not too technical but that's uh, that's pretty much what I've been doing so it's, it's taking up a lot of my time uh, like I said I, the only way I'm able to stay sane is to fit some hours into the things that I like doing like learning Wi-Fi, for example, or, or messing around with this little Ponagachi and stuff like that. So okay. I'm not applying. I'm not working on any uh, any certifications at the moment. I do because it was like a, an amazing sale. I, I got that EJPT uh, uh, course and certification. Uh, so I definitely want to take it. We talked about taking this thing like quite a few. I think it was the first time that we met you, Jacob. That's when you told us about this course and me and Pat were supposed to do it. I know that for sure. <laughs> I, yeah, so I think I think we're both slacking on that one, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's been a dumpster fire every year, so. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah it's crazy, man. Like this year, moving, then you know, losing my position in the beginning of the year. Then I had to sell my house, and come back to this house, and, and it's been crazy, crazy year. But but 2021, I really want you know, 
And if you guys haven't heard, um, I'm sure you have, I'm going to be doing some cybersecurity training with a company, uh, next gen, uh, next generation training. So I'll be doing cybersecurity training with them, um, starting tomorrow, actually. And, you know, doing some stuff, doing some cool stuff. And so there's a lot of good stuff that's coming down the pipeline over there. And, um, so hopefully you guys be on the lookout for that. It's a little nerve wracking. I'm not going to, I'm not going to front, you know what I mean? It's a little nerve wracking because it's uh, live courses, you know, I'll be live talking about whatever the, you know, whatever the subject is, photography, wireless, whatever, you know, whatever the subject is, you know, I've done, I've done Microsoft training, you know, MCITP training locally here in, in Boca Raton, Florida for a company called PC Professor. But remember, I was balls deep in that. So I didn't have to look at the MC, you know, the Act Directory book. I didn't you know I had to look at the, any of the books. Like I just knew it because working with it so much. But now this is going to be some diligence, right? Because you don't use it every day. You know, you, I do it every day, but not as far as, you know, getting weeds deep and, and then using the terminology like, you know, okay, what is PKI? What is cryptography? What is SSL? TLS, you know, in, in the nitty gritty of actually looking at a certificate and looking to see if it's valid and going to SSL checker and looking when it's expired. Like we don't look out, I don't, I don't look at this every single day. So, you know, sometimes explaining a topic is so different than knowing a topic. So I think people don't comprehend that, you know, you know, Wi-Fi, you know, you know, the three way handshake, sin, synac, acknowledgement, blah, blah, blah. You know how these things traverse, but when you really have to explain it in layman terms, yeah. If someone doesn't really understand those technologies, it can be, that's, you know, I'm going to have to simmer down, right? Like, yeah. because you expect to converse with someone like Jacob, you know? And then if I talk to James, that's electrician by day and then doing this by night, that was hobbying and getting into the field. I have to remember, okay, he might not know what an LM post file is. He may not yeah. know what resolve dot. You know, if I say, okay, well, let's use proxy chain in Calibrate or Parrot. But you have to, you know, make some changes to um, the resolve.com file. You're like, I don't know. Yeah. You know, like little things. And I'm like, okay, you have to, you know. It's hard to put yourself back in that mindset of like, oh, like, what is it like not knowing it? And mm -hmm. I'll give a couple of pieces of advice from having done a few live trainings and teaching. Um, live demos, something's going to go wrong mm -hmm. every time. It'll be something different every time. So just yeah let let that go because you, you'll be doing some troubleshooting on the fly if something goes right that's usually when i'm like okay what else is going to break mm -hmm. there's always going to be that one kid who is fucking smart and you know that that kid you wish you could be that like knows the topic and it, you know i'll get those who are like why are you using this cryptography program instead of this other one i'm like because that's the one i'm comfortable with you can use whatever you want i'm just showing <laughs> the basics but you know you like that kid have them help you uh, in the class like you can be a ta like you know help, yeah. help the other kids set up their computers but yeah no we exactly have, we like, have one and, of those and don't, yeah. don't use acronyms <laughs> stay away from acronyms like yes. spell out the acronym first don't assume they know the acronym because there's so much acronym overlap in yeah. it and this uh it's dangerous yeah no no totally totally so there you, you know it's definitely a, a new challenge and I'm, I'm, I'm super stoked about it. it's something that i've been wanting to do for a very long time um in this in this realm of things like you know the, the networking stuff so how it really works will have a crash course of networking because you can't really jump into the cyber stuff when you don't understand the basic fundamentals of what is the IP address what is a cider if i say okay a slash 24 slash 23 basic binary basic subnet not really ccna level or network plus level but if i say hey guys you know we're going to jump on this box it's a uh, 10111 slash you know 30 or this public address is slash 29. So we only have a point to point network that we're going to try to intercept some traffic between those, the web server and whatever. Yeah. You got to know your way around to get the traffic yeah. where it needs to go at least. Mm -hmm. And, you know, understanding Wireshark and understanding how to read packets and decompile the packet and look at the, you know, layer one, layer two, layer three, layer four, layer five, layer six, layer seven, and, you know, understanding how to, um, navigate around Wireshark and IP space, uh, IP dash address space equal equal and IP address, you know, some little syntax in Wireshark. So I, I've been right, like, I've been super busy and still like giving some ideas and, you know, tomorrow, you know, 
is um, when it starts. But, you know, the first couple of weeks I'll be doing some videos on different labs. So, you know, I won't be teaching yet in a cohort until I think March, but the first couple of months is um, setting up some different labs, setting up some different technologies. Um, the company is, is, is growing, it's building. So, you know, they want to um, have some, like, like something like practice labs, if you ever use practice labs, they want to have that in a like UCS, Cisco UCS environment in their data center so people can SSH into a, um, you know, a Cali box or whatever, something sort of like hack the box and all these kind of uh, try hack me, et cetera. You know, you can download the thing, you can see what the, what the you can get on your attack box. And yeah, get a feel for really working in, in those yeah. scenarios. Yeah, so I'm super stoked. It, it's like, we'll see, we'll see how it goes. Uh, but it's another- so, so it starts tomorrow. You, you earn the title of Professor Patty tomorrow. <laughs> Yeah. Right. <laughs> That's very cool. Oh, uh, or we get we're getting a t-shirt made. Yeah, yeah. Professor P. Professor P. Professor Patty sounds like an Irish pub. Yeah. <laughs> Professor P from NYC. Don't fuck with me. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think I, I think that's really cool though that you get to like take that step down and really learn to teach people because that it, it's good for the soul to be able to mm -hmm. do that, you know, and it helps really burn it in of of um you explain it and then you know it better you know the more you explain it the more you describe it in layman's terms the more you know better and are able to bridge that gap and it's even for, yeah even for me like at, at work like I, I work with a bunch of electricians and and i talk about some of the stuff that i'm doing you know uh, for the ponagoshi for example you know so being able to explain what that three-way handshake is and, and what it means to capture a hash and what it means to to crack that hash and compare it to a list of, of other hashes and stuff it, it's helpful to me is like, okay, so I kind of have an idea of what I'm talking about, you know, explaining it helps that. No, yeah, the point that you, you got to make sure you know your whitelist very well, and mm -hmm. you got to make sure you want, uh, program its uh, little behavior uh, correctly, because this thing can be pretty aggressive and de-auth everything around you, and <laughs> that technically be illegal, so you got to be careful. <laughs> Yeah, I was looking at some of the perimeters and uh, some of the things that are parameters that you could adjust. So yeah. some of the stuff I was getting into. What's really interesting is you can actually send messages between different Ponagachis and they'll recognize each other if they get close enough. And you can like use them almost like a old school pager to send messages back yeah, and forth. Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah. I have my grid turned off for now, but yeah. I might look into it. So I was actually working on a project just to mess with people at the guild because we have about like 30 people that made these one week. And uh, so downtown Tampa was having a bad time. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so we, we've adjusted those because we're not trying to get shut down. But uh, yeah, the, I want to make it an anti-Ponagachi where when it re registers other Ponagachis, it just floods fake four-way handshakes. Oh, nice. So it fills up your table with stuff that even if you crack it, don't go to anything. Oh, just waste wasting people's time, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I'll call it a troll. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome, man. That's cool stuff. That's all good stuff. And um, so, so you were skating yesterday? Uh, I was skating the, the other day. So uh, it was mostly for the picture. You know what's funny is that that picture was taken in completely pitch black. Like, I wasn't even sure if the picture was going to happen because uh, you, you couldn't see shit. Photoshop strong. Dude, it's a, <laughs> I was just... That was literally just iPhone camera right there. No, uh, no filters, nothing like that. So yeah, man, the new iPhones, man, they do some crazy. Like that thing I had sent, like that cool picture I took here, and like <laughs> you think, man, you can do some wicked stuff with it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which uh, we'll we'll have to talk about OSINT one of these days with some of the stuff you can do now. These cameras uh -huh. are so it's ridiculous. Oh, yeah. It's funny because it, that you mentioned that it was my friend that took the picture on his phone, and um, I was about to post, and I was like. I don't trust this guy. So I took a look at the picture that he sent me and sure enough, location is on, you know, and all this yeah. stuff. I'm like, come on, dude. <laughs> well, they, they, they were able to catch a Chinese hacker uh, because of a photo he had on a social media platform um, that had his hat in the background. So they were able to be like, oh, wait, that hat has this symbol, which is part of this Chinese army thing. And this photo <laughs> was taken from this angle. So they're like, that must be where the Chinese base is. Like, it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Or even uh, that documentary, uh, don't don't fuck with cats on Netflix. Like oh, that's a man. great 
had all those people that were crowdsourced to basically like going through video and stuff and they they had it, data on like a real murderer and like turned the stuff over to the police yeah it was crazy because yeah i watched that with samantha and she it was that was crazy crazy that, that's the, like, my buddy that works at thorn that's the type of stuff they do is like mm -hmm. they look stuff in the background of some of these um you know videos and try to track down people or try to find tags and they, they've done some really great work helping those victims because it's an insidious problem that we have that kind of goes under the radar too often and that's what i've been hearing a lot as especially as far as osint uh is like crowdsourcing and, and they give this information to a ton of different people you know i just recently saw someone post about it for um i think it was like child slavery and and that sort of thing and there was actually a, a course that i wanted to take that was out in uh in philly it was like a week-long course and, and that's exactly what you're learning about is some of this osint stuff because i mean the more people you have working at it then you know the more of a chance yeah. As opposed to just having like one or two agents that have that limited knowledge. They actually have some uh, CTFs that do, um, uh, they call like CSI um, OSINT challenges where they take real active like cold cases and then try to see if people can uncover data that might get leads, you know, for various different things that have just, you know, either gone the wayside or they haven't had any movement in like decades. So you got people that are like looking through old microfish film of like newspapers, like gathering <laughs> stuff. It's really crazy. That's cool. You got to do You got to do that little OSINT class also that we were talking about. So mm -hmm. just slap a more work on your, uh, on your to-do yeah, list. Yeah. Or, or I'll just direct people to like uh, Cyber Mentor did an intro to OSINT class. It covers a lot of the really good basics. Um, oh, and you then did. You have to, and then that's, the, the that's OSINT the... um, is good, but needs to be updated. That's the one that he posted on Udemy? Uh, yeah, I think so. And then OSINT okay. Framework is like an interactive map for different open source tools, but some of the links are broken um, because the links uh, or the tools actually don't work anymore for like Facebook and Instagram. A few of those others got taken down. People were abusing them, so the authors uh, restricted access, which sucks, but you know, that's why we can't have nice things. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, the restricted access and the deactivations, all that is running rampant lately. So, what can you do? But yeah, so, make our own tools. <laughs> yeah. I guess so, Pat, did you like? Uh, did you did you sign up for a Zoom account now? Because no, that's what I was just gonna look at. Like, Normally, we got that ten minute uh, window like like thirty minutes ago. <laughs> yeah, no, because that's what I'm saying. Like, it's almost it's almost twelve, and I I know you have to do some stuff, and I have to do some stuff. Yeah, yeah, but um. And I know this guy is not doing 100. percent So, yeah. So, um, yeah. This was a cool chat. You know, like hopefully people got like some tools that you can utilize. If you have any questions? Just hit us up, and like we're all on Instagram, so you can hit us up. I'll put the links below. You should throw your Discord link up on the video. Having people in there, yeah. you're usually in there. Yeah, yeah. We can chit chat on Discord. I'll put that in there as well. And if you have any comments, concerns, just hit us up below, and we're here to help, man. Like, there's something that we don't know. We can definitely find it. And, um, uh, I'm all, I'm all ears and support. A ask us questions. If you guys have asked, que have questions, ask us. Um, give us something to do. It's good for us. So. <laughs> all right, man. So again, take care, guys, and uh, until next time, have a good holiday. Merry Christmas, yeah, Merry Christmas. Happy holidays, guys. Yeah, man. Later. Thank you.